This video extends the previous video on phase plane trajectories by considering systems with oscillatory behaviours. Video 4 then demonstrated phase plane plots for free responses of state space models using insights from an eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition, and the focus there was where the eigenvalues were all real. And what we showed is that if you have a typical model of the form x dot equals ax with the response x of t equals 5t x of 0, when you express the phi using the eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition w e to the lambda t v, then you can show that the response can be broken down into responses along each eigenvector direction where the decays are linked to the corresponding eigenvalues. This video considers what changes will happen when these eigenvalues are complex, but we're still going to assume that they're all distinct. Now, we are only going to focus on the impact of a single pair of complex eigenvalues. It is possible to generalize for multiple pairs and to have many, many states and many, many eigenvalues. But the point is that meaningful sketches largely have to be in two dimensions, otherwise they're difficult to draw and difficult to interpret. So we're going to use the two-dimensional case to illustrate the concept and allow the viewer to see how this would extend to higher dimensions. A key point then is we're going to use an identical analysis to the previous video. And all we're going to do is wherever the previous video had a real number, if appropriate, we'll just use a complex number because algebra is algebra, so the algebra remains true. But there is one important point. We know that x of t must always be real. A reminder then of how the eigenvalue eigenvector decomposition works. So you can write a equals w lambda v, where w has the eigenvectors, lambda is a diagonal matrix of eigenvalues, and v has the left eigenvectors. And we know that wv or vw is the identity. Now what we're going to make different in this particular video is we're going to assume that some of the eigenvalues are complex. But a key point is that complex eigenvalues have associated to them complex eigenvectors and also these all must appear as complex conjugates. So eigenvalues appear in complex conjugate pairs and the corresponding eigenvectors must also appear as complex conjugate pairs. So if I have a two-dimensional matrix, so A equals W lambda V, and I say, look, I've got some complex eigenvalues, notice they come in complex conjugate pairs. One is A plus JB, the other must be A minus JB. If the eigenvector for one of these is W1, the eigenvector for the other must be W1 bar, the complex conjugate, and similarly for the left eigenvectors. Now, why is this relevant? Because if we take the general expression, which we derived in the previous video for x of t, which has a contribution along each eigenvector direction, if we now consider just this 2 by 2 example, or the complex parts, you'll notice that x of t has to take this form. And what's key here? You'll see I've got an x1 and an x1 bar, an e to the lambda 1t and an e to the lambda 1t, lambda 1 bar t. So those two parts are complex conjugates, one of each other. So therefore, I know that x of t must always be real. And therefore, after a little bit of algebra, which I'm not going to do because it's straightforward, I can extract the real bit of the exponential, the e to the at, and I can see that what's inside is going to be some vector z times cosine bt, some vector q times sine bt. And the key thing is this is real. And I've captured the exponential decay, which is in the e to the at part, and I've captured the oscillation, which is in the cosine and the sine part. Now z and q will depend upon the initial conditions, and obviously they also depend upon the definition of the eigenvectors. Some numerical examples then. Here's an A 
with a corresponding lambda. And what we see here is what the trajectories do. And the key point is if I start from x of 0, you'll see that it spirals in. And the reason it spirals in is because we've got a cos bt and a sine bt term. So these terms oscillate. And therefore, the components of x are going to go backwards and forwards around the origin. So we get this spiraling. Now, the oscillation, especially for very slow decays, will have an obvious major and minor axis, as with ellipses. And you can get these from, from the vectors z and q if you need to. However, that's beyond the remit of this video is because it's almost analysis for the sake of it. Key point, as you can see, here's the response. I've got an oscillation up and down this vector z, and I've got an oscillation up and down this vector q, and then 90 degrees out of phase with each other. Here's a different example, and in this one, because I've got a very slow decay, you can see almost that there's an implied major and minor axis. You can see the oscillation in the y direction is much larger than the oscillation in the x direction. But nevertheless, assuming we've got convergence, we still have this spiraling type of behavior. So in summary, complex eigenvalues imply the presence of oscillatory modes, and this results in spiral-like trajectories in the phase plane. Depending on the system characteristics, such as the damping ratio, this spiraling may have an obvious major and minor axis. So if you've got a very low damping ratio, so you oscillate a lot and decay slowly, that will become obvious. But if you decay relatively fast and oscillate a little, it may be less obvious. In general, the computation of these is not a paper and pen exercise, but it's useful and it gives insight into system behaviours.